Hello, this is Joe Cairone from RCT Remote Certification Training. Today, I am going to review with you the OFS 960S Fusion Splicer and how it interfaces with the smartphone application that you can download on your phone and that will enable you to change any of the settings within the splicer and also make updates to the splicer. So let's get into it. So I have already downloaded on my phone the splicer app, the Signal Fire splicing app. And you bring this up and you can see that there's a bunch of selections you can make. First selection you have up in here, if you click on it, you can see there's a whole bunch of tutorials that go through and tell you how to use the application. So I'm going to leave that up to you once you get your splicer. You can go through this, review this stuff, but I'm going to go through and actually go to each one of the other selections on the first screen to show you how to change some of the features and specifications and parameters of splicing. Okay, so the first thing we want to do with our splicer is we want to connect the application to the splicer. So you can see here it says device unconnected. So I'm going to click on that. And what it's going to do is you can see there's an AI-9 with a serial number. That needs to correspond here with the a serial number that's on the splicer. And this is also, also done through Bluetooth connection. So you have to make sure on your smartphone that the Bluetooth is turned on. So once you see that this splicer application serial number and this splicer serial number match, you click on that and now it automatically connects. And so now I have connected my phone app to my splicer. Now, go to the first thing here and it says read and record. I click on here and what I can do is any splices that I've made along the way I can actually export to an Excel, I can download and I have those records saved for future use if I have to do a report for a customer and whatnot. So we go back. We have a smart locking feature. Click on that and that feature you can basically if you have multiple splicers within your rental pool or technicians, they have multiple splicers that they use, you can actually lock one phone to an individual splicer based on the serial number. Go back. Now we're going to go here to heating time. So you can see here, I can have preheat the model on, so this will actually make sure that the heater is kind of preheated before you actually put a splice protection sleeve in there, um, just to kind of keep it up, especially if it's you're in a cold environment. So here I can choose what size shrink tube I can use. I can do a 60 millimeter, 40 millimeter, 34 millimeter, 15 millimeter, obviously there are those there, and you can also do customization ones. So let me just deselect the 60 millimeter by selecting the 40 millimeter, and you can see the 40 millimeter is selected. The heating time is 18 seconds. So now the unit, once you go back and or you save that, now, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but now you can see it's 18 seconds on the uh, display window here before it was 20 seconds for the 60 millimeter. So I'm going to go back there and change that back to the 60 millimeter. Click it here. See how it says 20 seconds? And I can save it. Notice how the 20 seconds now appeared on there. So that's how you can go through and change the uh, size and for, of shrink of the... Uh, protection sleeve on the app. So now we're going to go back. Now I want to go, now that I have it set up for 60 millimeter, I want to check my fiber type. So I go in here, I have single mode options, multi-mode options, okay, for splicing. But I can also go down here to specialty fiber, and I can do dispersion shifted, non-dispersion shifted, and some of the other applications that you have here, or I even can click on auto. So right now it's in single mode, and you'll notice there's single mode up here on the splicer. I'm going to change to multi-mode, and it's going to come up with some features that you have to read. You click OK, and then it says a termination. This is all something, since I switched to a different fiber type, I have to do the termination discharge correction. So I click on that. It does it 
automatically does it within the unit. And now you can see I'm on multi-mode fiber here, and you can see that there's multi-mode fiber on the screen also. So I'm going to change it back to single mode because that's where I like to keep it. Do the same procedures here, and you can see it changes back to single mode. So now I have my fiber type set. I have my heating time set, my fiber type set. Now, the other thing that you guys are going to have to know to do uh, each morning is do an arc calibration. Now, I'm not going to actually go through an arc calibration in this video, but we've gone over arc calibrations in some of, other, of our other videos, and you should always do an arc calibration because it accounts for humidity, temperature, and pressure or elevation where you're splicing. And the splicer will change those conditions to get you the best splice. So if I would click on our calibration, it's going to go through and it's going to tell you what you have to do going through here. And now it's going to tell you to input fiber into the fiber. And you're going to have to go through and uh, do your arc calibration as you would normally do. But again, we're not going to do that. I just want you to know that that's how you're going to go through and do arc calibration is through the app. Now we're going to click on splice settings. And this is where you get into the nitty gritty of your parameters. Um, so we hear the first thing is weld mode and parameter setting. Click on that and you can see you can change all these different settings in here. Okay, and this will modify if you click on multi-mode. Again, it's going to change certain things in here. Okay, and what's going to happen is when you change on the app, it's going to automatically change them onto the uh, splicer themselves. So I don't want to actually go through and change anything because these are pre-programmed. I would keep, you know, using the, you know, the way they are in the, in the actual app because they're already pre-programmed unless you have to change something along the way because uh, say you wanted a little bit extra voltage for whatever reason you were doing some experimentation you can go and change that stuff function configuration is the next thing you can see you can have now you can have cleave angle detection on here cleave face detection these are all things as you're going through and doing the splicing of the fiber it's going to focus on certain things that you want to you know you can have a pause in here so you can check the uh, Cleave angle. You can see if there's chips in the fiber from the cleave. You can have it autofocus, standby time, your power settings. You can turn buzzers on and off. There's a whole bunch of different you know settings that you can change here, um, which will be found in the in the function configuration. Again, we got the heat mode. Again, you can go through and change that. Manual adjust. So you can go through and change the camera focus and stuff like this. Again, I wouldn't play with this unless there's uh, an issue and you really know how these are going to affect your splice. Most of the times, however, that's pre-programmed, that's the way you're going to keep it. And then also, if you mess up or you do change something and you're having errors in your splicing and you're not sure how to change it, you can always go back to restore the factory settings and it will default everything back into that. And we have a running mode here. We have a normal mode, factory mode, arc calibration mode, and screen dust detection. Again, when you're running at regular splicing, you're going to leave it in the normal mode. Okay, so we'll back out of that. There's an optical module on this particular splicer. Um, you have an option for a power meter and light source that are built into the unit that you can test. And they're found over here. And the features of control modules are under in here. And you can take, you know, can take those and use that when you're splicing to measure power, level, power levels of the splice. Go out of there. And then we have activate electrodes. Now the unit comes with uh, a second set of electrodes. So when... You can see here we have remaining splices, 3,000. Once the total gets to 3,000, you probably want to change your electrodes. And then what you'll do is you will get your spare electrodes that come within the pack. And you know, there's a, a barcode that you can scan, and then it'll log that in there. And it'll reset the, the uh, splice count here for these electrodes back to 3,000 and to begin your down count again. And basically what that's doing is it's giving you an idea of where you are with how much life you have left on the electrodes. Here's another feature. You can do firmware upgrades. So anytime they push out firmware upgrades for this splicer, it'll come through the app. You'll download it and then it'll automatically upload into your splicer, which is a nice little feature.
The main thing you want to figure, to know from this is any of the settings that you need to change on the actual splicer. There's no, no menus on the actual splicer now. It's all done on the application, which is pretty slick. So you can set this up for how it needs to be, and then it goes out into the field, and that's how it's going to stay unless you have to change you know, for on the fly settings or anything like that. So that's pretty much the application and how it interfaces with the splicer. Basically, you're going to have to, you know, get on this splicer and again go to this first, you know, learn to operate, go through and watch these, look at these, read at these, these uh, little learn how to operate modules, and it'll give you a good understanding of how the app works and how you can change stuff. Thank you.